Hello and welcome to the short board on the double parsha of Matos and Mase. We'll begin with Matos. In Perak Lamed Pasuk Beis, the Pasuk says, Vedaber Moshe, El Roshe Hamatos of Bnei Yisrael, they more. Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes of the Bnei Yisrael, saying, Zed Davar Asher Tziva Hashem. This, these are the things that Hashem commanded. Rashi there says that Moshe Nes, Nesnabe Beko Amar Hashem, Moshe gave Nevua just like other Nevi'im by saying this is the what Hashem said, other Nevi'im said the same language there. However, Musa Alehem Moshe, Moshe had an additional level of Nevuah, they said, this is the word. That literally, the word of Hashem was coming out of Moshe Rabbeinu's mouth. Hashem spoke out of the groan of the throat of Moshe Rabbeinu, and that was a level that no other Navi was able to attain. So how is it that Moshe Rabbeinu attained this high level? So the Zera Shimshon, quoting the Amudei Shiva, who quoted the Ramami Pano, says when every neshama is born, it is a neshama that was attached to Adam Rishon in Gan Eden, and in Gan Eden, Adam Rishon sinned by eating from the Eitzadas, as we all know. So different neshamas were in different places. One was in the brain, one was in the back, one was wherever in different parts of the person's body. But each of them were able to hear from when Chava told Adam Rishon, here, eat from the, the fruit, and then Adam sinned by eating it, and he enjoyed it. So each of them, each part in the Shema, they heard and they enjoyed. And for that reason, there was a degradation of the spiritual level of the Neshama. However, Moshe Rabbeinu was not included in this, because Moshe Rabbeinu, yes, he was part of Adam Rishon, but he was part of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Adam Rishon's neck. And there, there's two different parts to it. There's the trachea for breathing, and the esophagus, another tube which is used for eating. Moshe Rabbeinu was in, in the trachea, the part for breathing. Therefore, when Adam Rishon sinned and enjoyed eating the apple, Moshe didn't participate. And when Moshe didn't, didn't dis- participate, then there was no degradation of his kedusha. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu was able to speak directly from the throat, from the mouth of Moshe Rabbeinu. So he attained a level that no other nev- Navi could reach. Moving on to Masay. So in Perik Lama Gimel, Pasuk Gimel and Daud, Vayisu me Ramses b'chodesh harishon, v'chemish asa yom l'chodesh harishon, mimachos ha-pesach, yatsu b'nei Yisrael b'yevrama. That they traveled from Ramses on the first of the... On, in the first month, on the 15th of the month, in the first month, the day after the, uh, the Pesach, to me this sounds a little bit redundant, but that's not the point. It says two, you know, that it says two, Bachodesh Rishon twice, and isn't the 15th, Memachos Pesach, the day after the Korban Pesach, the day after the 15th? So uh, if you have an answer, I'd love to hear. But my question is it says the Bnei Israel went out, Yed Ramav, they went out with an upraised arm. Le'inei kol Mitzrayim, before all of the Egyptians, u'mitzrayim, mekabim es asher hika Hashem behem kol b'chor, u'velohehem asa Hashem shvatim. The Egyptians were burying their dead, and Hashem struck the gods of Egypt. So why does the Torah here say, b'yad rama, with an upraised hand? Elsewhere the Torah says a language of a strong hand, b'yad chazaka, v'chozek yad, a language like that. Why is that different here? So as we know, that each that the Torah is very particular with this language, so each word has a different meaning. So when it uses the word biyad chazaka, that's talking about a physical manifestation of Hashem's power. But when we're talking about Hashem showing His spiritual power, such as defeating the gods, even though they're powerless, of course, and proving that He is the King of Kings, the holiest of holy, so then Hashem uses the language biyad rama for a higher. Uh, the, uh, the upraised hand for by that higher level of Hashem showing power on a spiritual level. And we see this elsewhere. We see this, uh, and this is also from the Zera Shimshon. Uh, then Parsha Shalach, in Parak uh, Yudal and Pasuk Yimel, it says, V'chazek Hashem as lay paro melech mitzvayim, Hashem hardened the heart of the ki- power of the king of Egypt. By Yudov Achrei B'nei Yisrael, they chased after B'nei Yisrael, B'nei Yisrael yotzim b'yad ramah. The B'nei Yisrael, there it says also, B'yad Ramah, on a high level, an, upra- an upraised hand. So why was that language used uh, as opposed to a chazik uh, or B'yad Chazaka? So once again, 
we're talking about a spiritual uh, show of Hashem's power. Because here the Bnei Yisrael were sent back to go to Baal Tzaphon. Baal Tzaphon was the remaining Egyptian god that was not destroyed. Hashem purposely left one god out um, as a way to trick the Egyptians and thinking, oh, these were the weak gods, but actually there's competition, uh, Kaviyachol, by a, uh, another god that is, that is still alive. And therefore we're going to go out, we're going to succeed now, drown the Bnei Yisrael. Instead Hashem turned the tables and showed that, nope, you're going to drown here, and your guy about Siphon, he's just as ineffective as any other of your Avodazaros, and therefore, which the language here is Biyad Ramah, he's showing his spiritual greatness that Hashem see, exceeds uh, any other power in the world, not just on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week, wonderful Shabbos. Please feel free to share this at your Torah or online.